All right, Nuff Club World Cup. How about some quick hits? Yes, it's a part of the show you've all been waiting for. Barcelona roll past Alaves 4-1 and head into 2020 atop La Liga. Jules, they haven't lost that game at home since November 2018. They still have Messi. There's every reason to think this team will only improve once everybody else starts pulling their weight, right? Is that? Why? No, because there they've got a great coach. A great manager in Valverde. I, I mean, Alaves. Well, it was only Alaves, okay. Uh, I do think that Griezmann slowly is starting to integrate himself in. He scored again, although it looks like after the hour he, he dips a bit in physic, physic, you know, physically. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I still think this is a team with too many good players to play so badly at times. Uh, you know they're not going to recruit in January unless they bring back Kevin Prince Boateng, which is not going to happen shortly a second year in a row. I don't think that Valverde is good enough to improve that team collectively. The only way this team could improve collectively is that if the players start taking it in I, their own hands. I, I'll go further, right? I mean, we're not, we haven't talked about Messi's goal. They're, they're two one up, right? They're two yeah. nil, half time. You figure, let's manage the game. No, they concede a goal. And then Messi scores. Well, I thought that was an unbelievable yeah, goal. It I know. Was. It, it was. does it so often that, like, it'll, this will it's get the lost. Norm, the normality, yeah. Yeah, it's not even in, like, the Messi top 100 <laughs> goals. But I thought that was, watch it again. It's incredible. He's in traffic. He's a million yards Just, out. He makes it look so effortless. That goal changes the game. That yeah. goal then at 3-1, all of a sudden, you know, it's not squeaking bum time. How many times are they going to be messy dependent like this? This is my concern. I know. Or it would be I if I cared about Barcelona. <laughs> Well, Real Madrid dropped two points at home to Athletic Bilbao. Gab, it's a nil-nil draw. It's the third draw in a row after Valencia and the, and the Clásico, obviously. Uh, they look good in the Clásico, but now this, what do you think? I thought they looked good at the risk of being accused of being anti-Barcelona and pro-Real Madrid. They freaking hit the woodwork three, three times. times. I mean, so Unai, Sim, yeah, Unai Simon made some incredible saves in goal for Bilbao. I mean... That's all you can really ask for. I, I thought they were the better team in, in the Clásico uh, as well in, in midweek. And there's still, you know, injured players to come back. There's still chemistries to be found. There's still calls to be made. Um, I think you're in good shape if you're Real Madrid. I got no problem with that. Yeah, me neither. Manchester City beat Leicester 3-1, and they pull within a single point of them. It's Leicester's first defeat since early October and City are now hot on their backsides. I won't ask you about the title race, but this is normality sitting in for City, right? They're going to finish second? They're going to finish second, yeah. There's no Anything you learn from this game? Just I think they've got a swagger back. They've got that fluidity back a bit, which we talked about it a few times before. Do you remember against in the derby as well, where we said there was no plan B really, and, and Pep, there was, there was something missing. there's a plan B now? No, it was not so much the plan B, but... Just that they're better. Remember the plan B? Do you know... Plan B is execute plan A better. When you've got better players in better form, you execute plan A better. True, yeah, true. I do think, though, that when David Silva doesn't play, and I, I know he's had good games, and I know he played well at times, but I, I can see the difference. And I can see the difference when Kevin De Bruyne is are pushed... You, ooh, ooh, ooh. Are, are, is your take, they're better without David Silva? Yeah. Ooh. I think he's played too much this season before before having the, the, the little niggle injury. And I think the problem is that when you play David Silva and you, you have to play him quite high up on the pitch, almost in a 4-4-2 formation, or a 4-2-4 formation if you want, because because he doesn't have the legs anymore to play a bit deeper, which means you play Kevin De Bruyne deeper, which I think you lose a lot of Kevin De Bruyne if you play him too deep. I know he can play anywhere and he's that clever and he's that great and all of that, but you see the difference when he's a bit higher up on the pitch everything that he creates all the differences that he makes all of that makes such a big difference and I think uh, uh, in that game especially and against Arsenal although Arsenal is a is a given because they're so bad but it's just you see how important he is in that position which um, he hasn't always played there we, we've been praising Leicester defensively all season yeah um, were there some wobbles in there do we uh, yeah, I, th I thought there was a bit. I mean, Maybe or is it just it's hard to defend well when you play against Manchester City because they're so talented? Yeah, I mean, it is a bit of both. But Soyuncu on the Gabriel Jesus goal, for example, the way he like throws himself at De Bruyne and De Bruyne is far too easy for him to go past Soyuncu and then cross the ball square. It was like a Willy in an, an just, Aurier situation. Yeah, without even the step over. So <laughs> he didn't even have to do the step over. He just went one side because Soyuncu just threw, him, threw himself in. So... I don't think it's in that game that you, you 
that you could say, okay, Leicester was so good defensively and now they're suddenly rubbish because I think that City in that kind of form, they were so relentless and you've made a few mistakes. I thought Chilwell and Ricardo Pereira, who've been so good all season, look like, you know... They're allowed a game off. Yeah, yeah, they're a bit struggling, both against Mares and and Sterling. And Mares, in a game like this, I thought Pep, Pep made the right call by starting him. As well. oh, we don't have a show next week. Um, uh, we'll I know, be back because once tell, tell the people why. Because I'm going skiing and you're exactly. going gallivanting. I'm going nowhere. I would be here. I, you know, I can't do the show by myself, but you know, I would be, I would be here, but you've, um, you've abandoned me. But by the time we come back, transfer window will be open. Yeah. I'm curious, assuming Emmerick Laporte comes back, and, and do you have any inside info when he's coming back? I believe... Uh, February? Yes, beginning of February. I'm just wondering whether City might want to invest in a winger. Because, again, I don't know if Leroy Sané is a virtual player at this stage of his career or not. But if you can sell him, Sané, you sell him right now, right? Of course, but Raheem Sterling, I feel like the guy's played every minute of every game. He probably hasn't. I'm sure he hasn't. But that's one guy just wondering, and I know he's like a tank physically. Yeah. But I do wonder about that a little bit, whether they could also, that's another position where maybe you could use an extra an extra body. Or just play Phil Foden more. Hey, that's yeah, what we oh all yeah, want to see. That's a good idea. But certainly a centre-back. They would go for a centre-back first before anything else, I think. And rightly so, if they go for something. Just when we thought Manchester United were improving, they take a step back, losing 2-0 at bottom of the table. Watford, who never won at home in the league this season. What, what happened? What's going on? So, a lot of people will focus on David De Gea, and he made an absolute hash of it. Um, I know this like knee jerk, David De Gea, the best keeper in the world thing. You know, that jumped the shark a long time ago. Imagine, imagine giving him a new big contract with loads of money in it. I mean, I got less of a problem. Well, it's interesting. I mean, look, Mark Ogden said, sell him when you can sell him and get all black, you know? And I think there would have been a logic in it. Yeah. Right? Look, I mean, look, this is a bad game. He saved their I know, behind the first time. Yeah, yeah, it's not the on. first time. It is funny, though, because he is a guy whose reputation in the Premier League, is, or at least among United fans, is so much higher than it is elsewhere. So I'm not sure that they could have gotten all this money. Yeah. There was this massive market for him. Um, but uh, I refer you to the words of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who basically said we were terrible and I'm not happy with this performance. And I, I'm not Solskjaer's biggest fan as a manager, but he can be really honest afterwards. Yeah, 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 and I think that's, that's true. It's not the first that's refreshing. Yeah, yeah. I kind of think this is as simple as if you play, if you set up the play on the counter, you get results against teams who go and attack you. And if you don't, you won't. Watford sat, waited for a mistake, and uh, and took advantage of it. I Did think it's as simple that, as that. That stats that when United have over 50% of possession, they've won one game this season out of 13. Six that's draw, terrible. Six draws and five defeats when but, you have the ball more than... Half of the time. I want to ask you while we're at it. Paul Pogba. Yes! So he comes back, and even before the game, I think it was Gary Neville, who I, I'm going to praise. I thought he took a, I thought his words afterwards on the racism were, were, were yeah, great yeah. And, and important. Yeah. But you've got me and Ryle a statement, and you've got Neville going on, Pogba wants to leave, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> you know, people say, well, but he knows, he loves the club, uh, Gary Neville, that is, and he talks to people at the club. Yeah, does he talk to Pogba? I mean, I don't. You, but I, you know, I Mino could be lying as well, right? Mino of could course, stay in, of in, course. in an English newspaper. He wants to stay. Of course, of course. And we put too much stock in what all these people say. But it's pretty obvious that Pogba understands that he's only going to be able to leave to the kind of club that he wants to leave to if he has a tremendous Euros or he starts playing really, yeah. really well, if yeah. he wants to keep earning the money that he earns. So the stars line up here, you know. Uh, and I thought he came on that. United's best chance in the game, or one of the best, was that was was Greenwood at the end. They went for Rashford just before as well. That was, Sem- but that was similar Pogba. ball. Yeah, the two of them were. So if the problem the- is creativity, you just drop Pogba in there. Bye bye Jesse, or go I mean, somewhere. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, let's not put Jesse Lingard and Paul Pogba in the same sentence. <laughs> well, I'm just saying one replaces the other. But no, but when Pogba comes in, this is what I want to ask: How do you rework the midfield? Do you, you go don't. McTominay, Pogba? No. Fred? No, no, you leave Fred and McTominay and you said That's to Pogba. That's what I just said. No, no, but, yeah, but there's, no, there's no Pogba on the same line or there's no, there's Pogba. Oh, you go 4 2 three, 1 and you play Pogba uh, you, ahead of the other two. Free. And he will drop deeper because he's not. So he can hit those long passes. Yeah, and he will, he will defend as well. He and you keep not, James in the starting lineup. And you, yeah, you keep him in the starting lineup. Is he any good? Uh, 
he has good side of him. He does good things at times. Sometimes he disappears completely, and you wonder not just because he's small if he's actually there on the pitch somewhere. But he, he yeah, he's got good things. I'm not sure. It, I don't think he's ready right now to be consistent at his best for the whole season. So if you could go with an, imp- you know, find another winger that is a bit better, and then you give him, you give him a bit of a rest. How about Rashford and a little more Greenwood down the middle? Yeah, maybe you can. Maybe you can, and you could put Martial wide as well. I don't think that would be Rashford, Martial, Greenwood, and Greenwood. Yeah, you could try maybe that as not well. Not every week. But I think James needs a bit of a rest. But right. with Pogba. Dude, just do that because it seems that he played a bit on the left hand side when he came on, and clearly there was a midfield with Fred and McTominay. I think leave him free, leave him literally leave him free. He will drop deep, he will put the shift in and the effort in, but he will have all that freedom to, to be as creative as he can. And we saw in 25 minutes, came on in the 64th, in, in 25 minutes, he did more than all the other players together. In, in the rest of the time. Okay. You, 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 enough crazy. Pogba love. No, no, let's talk not, about, let's talk about somebody, something something you love even more than Pogba. Paris Saint-Germain. Hey, Pogba they take PSG. the mick, as in the Mickey Mouse. Um, they do it again. They beat up Amiens 4-1, and guess what? Mbappe, Icardi, and Neymar, they all score again, just as they've done in each of the last four games. Incredible. It's all coming together, right? It is. I mean, it is, and it's only Amiens and it's only Ligue 1 before you abuse me with the <laughs> Farmers League on Twitter and stuff like that. I know. I know. By the way, even, can I just reiterate just because it bugs me? Well, the Farmers League. Farmers League <laughs> is such a stupid expression. If you don't like Ligue 1, call it a rubbish league, call it a third rate yeah, league. Yeah, call it the league what where your friends What the hell does Farmers fans. League mean? I don't know. What does it mean? What's the <laughs> etymology of it? I guess farmers are rubbish at football, I guess. So it's oh, a, are they? I don't know. I mean, some... I, yeah, I don't know. I guess is it. But Was Frank de Boer rubbish at football? Coaching it, so maybe. Much. But yeah, coaching Playing maybe. it, not so much, not right? Not so much. And Frank de Boer means Frank the farmer. <laughs> no, I'm not... I, Ronald Koeman was good too, right? Yeah, yeah, he was. He was. And Koeman indeed, means yeah. cowman. <laughs> I just made that up, but it sounds plausible. All right, no, no, back to Paris Saint-Germain. Come on. Yeah. Icardi. Icardi's good, right? Oh, my God. So the first goal is an Icardi pass to Neymar. And he's unselfish. It is unselfish. I mean, you've never seen Icardi play that well. No one has. It's just incredible. The happiness, one guy coming out saying, we don't make, we don't have sex if, if he doesn't win. Thank God he joined PSG because, you know, they win a lot of game now. So clearly she'd be happy in, in the bedroom. But the first goal is Icardi to Neymar to Mbappe. The second goal, if I if I recall properly, is Di Maria to Icardi to Neymar. The third goal is oh, Neymar so to Di Maria to They're Mbappe, glowing. and the fir- the fourth goal is Bernard to to Icardi. But that that Fab Four, the the fantastic four, that we were not sure if Tuchel would play fantastic or not or would four. start. Well, how else do you want to call them? I was you know thinking about something is this, with four. Is this evidence that? People in the black and blue half of Milan are all stupid, and they didn't yeah, understand. It what makes they no had. sense to me. And I, okay, maybe it was a bit of a of a of a brat at time, and I think he, maybe Icardi has died in him, and maybe one day he's not easy to deal with and work with, and all of that. There's a point when when it's a play like that. I think you make a few effort to sort of make him happy and keep him happy, you know. And and PSG at some point things might uh, crumble and and turn ugly because they often do in that club. But for now, they're certainly enjoying themselves. Neymar is happy a lot. Uh, Kylian Mbappe was just on 21 two days ago and <laughs> dyed, his, dyed his hair as well. I'm not sure why, but he's happy as well. And and even Leo Paredes is, is playing okay, so right, great. Right, we're, so we're, it's good. We're, we're no, no, but you, you're going to say like everyone, oh, yeah, but let's judge when the Champions League comes back in February. Of course, of course. But, right. you know, still. Right, it's the Italian Super Cup in... Saudi Arabia, as you you know, as you do, and as you'll be you Hey, if Anthony won. Joshua can go there, then you yeah, know. Yeah, okay, fair enough. We can sell our souls too. Yeah, is, does this trophy matter really in Italy? And what should we read into it when Lazio beats Juve again, three one after the same same score and same defeat before? Well, first of all, this trophy does matter in Italy. I know it's it's a weird thing, but um, we're of the uh, Mourinho school of thought when uh, in yeah. counting trophies. Um, I think it does matter because it's Lazio's beaten them twice in, in, in the last couple of weeks. And uh, and I also think it matters because you remember how Sadi was playing that he decided three games ago to play, yes, let me just play Higuain, Dybala, and Cristiano together. And some of us, i.e. me and many others, said on this, okay, you can do this in certain games. We want you to do it in big games too. 
but you can't do this all the time because Cristiano's 34 and Iguain is yeah. 32. Neither one is the Energizer Bunny. So, of course, he does it again against Lazio, and Lazio rips them to shreds. Now, it's not the only reason that they lost. Cristiano actually played played pretty well, yeah, I thought. I thought too. But it was that, that midfield, it gets overrun because they have to work that much harder. Three straight, you can't play those two dudes, these three guys together for three straight games. You have other solutions, but we can pick holes. And then and then Sadi comes out and says, oh, they looked a little tired and drained. Oh, really, Captain Obvious? Really, did they look a little tired and drained after you play these guys together for three straight games and then you fly them halfway <laughs> around the world? Um, but It was not very clever from Sadi, right? No, but I think we should also... We could just make it about pointing out Sadi's flaws, although I'll point one other one, Mattia De Ciglio. I don't understand why this guy plays for Juve. Oh, yeah. um, but we have to give credit to Lazio because like, I, I thought Simone Inzaghi's main uh, quality in life was that you know he was better looking and, uh, his uh, than, than his brother. Um, <laughs> but he's, he's a really good manager. Yeah. He interpreted this game really, really well. That front four that we, we talked about, Milinkovic, yeah. Savic, Correa, Luis Alberto was magnificant. And it was, it, it was again, yeah. Once again, um, ripping them a shred. Danilo Cataldi, wonderful free kick at the yeah. end. Um, well done, Lazio. Jules, there's, they're, if they win their game in hand, they're three points back. I would love it. Ah, I'd love correct. it if, love we had it. A, if we had a three-way race love for it. the title. Now, it's tough going for Bayern against Wolfsburg. Held, uh, they were held at home until five minutes from time when an 18-year-old named Joshua Zerkze came on and scored, just as he did in midweek. That's two goals in nine minutes of senior football. So if you project it over goals per 90 minutes, yeah. it, works to 90 mi- it works to 20 goals <laughs> every 90 minutes for this guy. It's pretty um, impressive. Now, joking aside, presumably he'll regress to the mean, but... It's not good that they need to rely on these late, late goals. Uh, it's not. And just to finish on 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 Zerkzee, who's uh, who's Dutch, by the way, and and one of those little prodigy that the Bayern snapped up. He's not little. He's a big dude. Yeah, a big dude, but in the sense that you know, young. I mean, little in in terms of young. But he scored two goals on his first two touches on each game, uh, which I think has never happened in the history of the Bundesliga. In 63 years, when he played 90 of minutes history. for the, I was for the shot, reserve, yeah. for the reserves the next day. <laughs> no, pretty impressive. And let's see, let's see how far he can go. But obviously, no, you need, you know, you need to rely a bit more on your star players. Maybe there's a bit of tiredness there. Maybe Ansi Flick, who, by the way, will stay until the end of the season, mm-hmm. which adds another chapter of the intrigue of what's going to happen next. Because obviously, if you you know, didn't you, I call it? Didn't I say Hansi Flick should stay till the yeah, end of the season? We said that, and I think I think it's the right call. I think because one things are working with him. To be fair, compared to Kovac, it's not perfect, and as we saw in the last two games, it's not perfect. Uh, and they still have, a, I think, a tough tie in the Champions League against against Chelsea. Maybe tougher than they they think it would be or they expect it to be. Uh, but I think I think he's got enough in him, Flick, to last until the end of the season without being a disastrous next six months. They're four points back. They could win it. Yeah, they could win it. And, and in the Champions League... And it gives them more time to does. pursue Pochettino too. Or Ten Hag or whoever they want Ten to go Hags. for. But it's easier for them in the summer than to have done it like in January and stuff like that. Uh, but but I think they would need all the, the, the best players back to full fitness, including Robert, ob- obviously, uh, because he's been a bit off colour in the last two, three games, really. Uh, and I'm still not convinced that Thomas Muller has added value to this team. Um, they did that thing that Bayern loved doing, which is going plucking star players from uh, other teams in mid-season. Yeah. Not announcing that Alexander Nubel, or maybe they didn't announce it, but it's a fact, Alexander Nubel, yeah. uh, the Schalke goalkeeper, will be joining them in 2020. Now, they really like this guy. He's very young. He, he, he almost killed someone last week, though. Yeah, it's funny. He made, <laughs> he made, a, he made a gigantic wicket uh, <laughs> a, couple, a, couple, uh, a couple games ago. Um... What does this mean for Manuel Neuer? That's it's a it's a Buffon Chesney first spell pre PhD spell idea, right? Is that you bring Noble in and Neuer is still your number one, but then slowly he becomes a number one number one base. Yeah, but Neuer is not that old. Well, Neuer is what thirty three, so it's, it's you know I know for a keeper that's young, but still, I think you've. Yeah, but how you've, many years does Noble want to be on the bench? But is he really going to be on the bench? I think they're going to share a bit. Maybe not the first season. The second season, they're going to start sharing. For me, it's very much like a Buffon Chesney 
first time round dynamic? I would think you might consider monetizing Neuer if you can. How? At this stage. Like what? Send him to China? I can't have uh, no, foreign no, no, goalkeepers. No, no, not China. So where? He's no, not going to go just, to another club in the. Or what? Are you sending Neuer him back to Schalke no, for like a. I don't know. Neuer hasn't been Neuer for a while. Um, exactly. So yeah, maybe a season and then you move on. You know, like the Czech Courtois situation, if you will, at Chelsea. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's an idea. I guess. Right. Let's talk about Milan. I mean, we had to, even if it's Christmas. We had to, Gab. They got hammered away to Atalanta 5 0, which I think is their worst defeat ever in the history. They lost 6 1 twice and 5 0 to Roma like 20 years ago or something. I thought you said they were improving. Even Boban said it was embarrassing. We're like, come on. Because it was embarrassing. Now, I, they're not the first team to be embarrassed by Atalanta. Um, oh, come on. They won't be the last team. Who, who uh, else did Atalanta be 5 0? They've scored so many goals. I'm yeah, sure I don't have the uh, list in front of me. But yeah, the but thing about Atalanta is like that when of... when they're in when they're on song, um, they make you look stupid. You know, they, they 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 even made Manchester City look stupid for 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 half an hour, right? And Milan are no Manchester City. Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of things went wrong in this game that could have that shouldn't have gone wrong. I think they really missed Theo uh, as well. But look, I'm not. I mean, if if you can't. With your without your left back, he's your left back. He's not like he's your top scorer. Just I know, about. but still. Um, but uh, look, they were improving, and this is a hammer blow because um, it's the the the, the they beat Udinese seven one. Yeah, producer. Udinese. Okay, Udinese have been in the Champions League. It feels like I know as much like, as Milan you know in the I last mean. decade. But anyway, um, this is a real hammer blow because they were really, really improving. They were improving in the way they played. The results were coming. And now you do go this, and you don't have a chance to get back out there and remedy yeah. it because now we're heading we're heading into the break. Um, I hope this doesn't lead to some weirdo knee-jerk reaction when they panic and they get on the phone to Ibra straight away and whatever. Um, they have a plan. Stick to the plan. Treat this like a bump in the road. Get back into training work hard, and turn it around and what be grateful Ibra? that... Do you think they need Ibra? Do you think they no, will get Ibra? No, I don't. You don't think they should sign him at all? No, Ibra's, get, Ibra's, Ibra's going to Everton anyway. <laughs> I don't know. Imagine. I don't think so. <laughs> Aja Correa shines and Alvaro Morata scores as Atletico win at Betis 2-1. Jules, I need to talk, you, talk to you about Alvaro Morata, who's one of my favorite yeah. subjects, not just because he's probably... Top three most handsome center forwards yeah, in the he world. Is, he is. Him and Giroud. Yeah. Um, now we saw a great goal, but we also saw some horrendous misses yeah. in the game. But he's got ten goals at this stage of the season, all of them from open play. That's a good return. It is right. Who needs Diego Costa? Not them. I think you know what. I, I wonder if the issue is is psychologically somewhere in the sense that when it's a tough chance. He's thinking, do you know what? I'm never going to score that. Let's, go. Ah, I'll go for it. And then he scores. And sometimes I swear he looks surprised. Oh my God, I, sc I scored that. I'm and then when it's an easy chance, and his mind just goes like, "Oh, you're going to score this. It's <laughs> no. easy. You're going to score. You're going to score. Just, just make sure you score. Oh, you've missed again." And he's just like, "Oh my God, I, I just don't know." By the way, that build at times up. it looks like a, it looks like a, an incredible striker, and other times it looks like he's completely clueless. But that build-up and that pass from Correa yeah, for, for the back heel, unbelievable. And, but if you rely on Correa, it's not a good thing because the guy is the most inconsistent guy you've ever been on at, at, at that kind of level, right? Well, well like, unlike, like, it's like I'm you're like, describing <laughs> Morata, you know? It's a team of inconsistency anyway. Well, Inter beat Genoa 4-0 to stay level with Juve at the top of the area. Lukaku is up to 14 goals now uh, for his first season in Italy. But there could have been more, right, Gab? Yes, for the fourth time this season, Lukaku let somebody else take a penalty for yeah. Inter. Uh, and in this case, he let Sebastian Esposito uh, the young, take... Yeah, the young kid. 17-year-old kid, thrown at the deep end, by the way. Which tipped, is a good thing, right? He tipped my hat to Mr. Conte yeah. um, about the kids. Remember the, those kids that you know never won anything and blah, blah, blah. Um, but you're playing them and, you know... Esposito's holding up his end of the bargain mm, and yeah. you got a guy with the maturity and the selflessness and, and the leadership qualities of Lukaku to say hey you know what you take the penalty you enjoy the goal it's so sweet he went off he celebrated with his mom and everything um, good feelings all around their level with Juve 
Yeah. Uh, let's see what happens in January. Now, what do you think is going to happen? Well, obviously, Conte, you know, not Conte directly, but other people said, oh, look, you know, Conte's gifted them first place in the, in the table. Now it's time for Inter to get, to, get, uh, to get Conte gift. You know, they need like these yeah. five players. I think you got a good thing going. You obviously need another body. Sainsi, by the way, came on yeah. as a sub. And Barrella Big return, but well. will be back. Um, I think this team could use one or two tweaks, one or two high-energy midfielder yeah. would help. So that Brozovic, who's run more than anybody in Serie A this season, could, can take a day off. Um, and obviously you need to figure out Alexis Sanchez. Uh, yeah. If this, this dude's not going to play, you know, you pack him up in a box and you send him back to Old Trafford. I think that's pretty obvious. And you get, um, Giro, you get Giro in. Oh, or Giro? Giro would, would do the trick. Or, yeah. or there's Kulusevsky, who's oh, all really excited yes, about. Yes. Um, but, but the point is, I, I think it's a celebration of Lukaku because he may not be right for every club in the world, but he's proving to be a tremendous signing on the pitch and, and, and off it as well. Marseille beat Nîmes 3-1, which means they have taken 22 of a possible 24 points. Jules, here's a chance for you to tell us how brilliant Andre Villas-Boas is. Yeah. And Dimitri Payet scores too. Yeah, and Dimitri Payet scores the third goal and then go and get a uh, Christmas hat. A bit like yours, uh, to celebrate. Not as stylish as mine. Not as stylish as yours. Doesn't have that nice Eagles logo. No, it doesn't have either. But, you know, he was a bit like... Like uh, Père Noël, uh, Dimitri Payet on on Saturday night. Père Noël would be Father Christmas, Father Christmas, or Santa indeed. Claus, or Chris. Yeah, Chris Kringle. Who's Chris Kringle? What's Chris Kringle? Chris Kringle, in some traditions, is uh, Santa Claus's real name. In in what traditions? Where? I believe in parts of the United States. Really? Maybe, maybe Chris in Scandinavia, Kringle. which is where he oh. comes from originally. Wow. Okay. Hello, Chris Kringle. Yeah, and, and, and Payet was really good. I mean, I still think he, he looks like a kind of bueno at times, but, you know, he's <laughs> he was amazing. He's had a very good first half of the season, and so did AVB. He really brought something to that club in terms of energy, in terms of, again, we talk a lot about structure for, for Arteta, Arsenal, but there's a lot of that in the way this Marseille team plays. And, and I really hope they finish in the top three to qualify for, for the Champions League next season because they would deserve it. And AVB, who you and I and a lot of people in England have you know, criti criticised before in the past when I don't think he was kind of ready for, uh, for a lot of the things that he, he faced in the UK, both at Chelsea and at Spurs. But he's doing a really good job and I think he's matured a lot. He's changed a f some of the flaws he'd had before, I think he's worked on it too, uh, which is a sign of intelligence. And and yeah, they've been really good, uh, really efficient in both in, in, in both boxes. And I really hope that the club will maybe give him a bit of money. They don't have much at all uh, to strengthen that squad. And then they will have Florian Thauvin, who is arguably still the best player uh, to come back as well from his uh, ankle injury. Did he change his league. haircut, by the way, Thauvin? Like, is it, did he what? Didn't Tovan have that stupid Tintin type haircut? Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, but it's he's gonna be a dad now. So he's happy again, and uh, and I still think he's he's too good for Marseille. And no offense to Marseille, but you know he did he deserves a bigger club and maybe uh, you know a, a, a top club in the Champions League at some point. But him coming back would be good for them. Right, that's enough of Marseille. I mean, I can't believe you made me talk about Marseille so much, almost more than PSG. But let's finish with Borussia Mönchengladbach, uh, who not long ago were top of the Bundesliga, uh, and we used to love them and Marco Rosa, but they're held by Jürgen Klinsmann at Berlin, while Leipzig come from behind to beat Augsburg 3-1. That means Leipzig are winter champions in Germany. Gab, can they hang on? I mean, we have a proper title race on our hands, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, we, we, we definitely do. I mean, I think Gladbach are, are falling off a little bit. I, I just think physically it's, it's taken a lot yeah. out of them. They also had the Europa League. That squad isn't that big. Um, but, man, Leipzig, they just keep going. They, they, they've scored two or three goals a game now. It's crazy. It's like every single match. Patrick Schick, my man, yeah, again. Finally. I mean, come on. Four long? goals in five games. This is this is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I, look, I, I think it's fantastic. And I'll tell you what, like, if they get Haaland, yeah. maybe he's just window dressing here. You know, if they get him, they're going to win the league, right? And then they knock out Spurs in the Champions League. Do they need League. him? Then they, they, do they, they need him? Do you need Haaland yeah, when you, you have do. the Sheik? You've got the And Schick. you have Yusuf Paulson. I mean, yeah, but Yusuf Paulson. <laughs> Haaland is a better Yusuf Paulson, right? 
is an improvement. Let I think Schick is a better. You <laughs> think Paulson gives you so much effort, but man, like they say, like the guy's got square feet. Like the ball <laughs> bounces off him everywhere. But but they've but got Schick, if you've got Schick, Werner, Haaland, and Paulson, that's four different profiles. In yeah. a way, that's interesting for Nigerians. And you have Nkunku, who seems to play all over the pitch. Yeah, he's good. By the way, what happened with that dude? I don't know. I think I think in in Paris they didn't really believe in him. Uh, m- m- but maybe the flexibility that Nigerian has in that team to enable Nkunku to play a bit everywhere, which is less structured than maybe what was with Tuchel in Paris. I don't know. I, I, he gave it a go, and he could have left earlier. He stayed a bit longer. And then he chose, you know, he chose to to finally leave, and the club wanted to recoup a bit of money as well, which they did with a few other youngsters. So, good on him, and I'm glad he's working out for him. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube, and for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN Plus.